Hey, New Hope family, Pastor August here with a little Devo encouragement for you. Um, some of you don't know me all that well yet, and that's fine. We're going to get to know each other as time goes on. But one thing about me is that I love movies. I love going to movie theaters. Uh, I love sitting at home watching movies. I'm the guy that when I see a movie that I really enjoy, I'll watch it over and over and over again. Right now at this moment, for the third time I think in my life, I'm watching all of the Marvel superhero movies again in chronological timeline order because I love movies. I love stories. I love being engrossed um, in stories. And this is my personal opinion, uh, but I think it's the right opinion. Uh, I, I personally believe that the greatest movie of all time uh, is the Walt Disney masterpiece, The Lion King. Come on. Now, there are some great movies, right? Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, Iron Man, Avengers. They're all great movies, but The Lion King, there's just something special about The Lion King, which for me makes it the greatest movie of all time, in my opinion. You don't need to argue about that with me, all right? That's my opinion. You ain't going to change that. But there's one line in this movie that I think is super important and super powerful, and you'll probably hear me preach about it at some point in time. But it's when um, Simba f is kind of having an identity crisis. He doesn't really know uh, what's going on. You know, everything has happened with his dad. His dad passed away um, and his evil uncle kind of took over the kingdom, you know. And Rafiki the monkey, he finds Simba and he leads him to a river and he says, look, look at the water. Who do you see? And he's like, I see myself. What do you? He said, look closer. And as he looks closer, he begins to see uh, the image of his father in himself. And then his, you know, in, in Walt Disney fashion, Mufasa, his father shows, appears in the clouds and begins to speak the truth of who he is over him. And, and Mufasa from the clouds tells his son, you must remember who you are. I think that's powerful because as Christ followers, not only do we need to remember who we are in Jesus, we need to remember who God is to us how much he loves us, how much he cares for us, the sacrifice that he made on the cross just so we could have a relationship with him. Right now, I'm in 2021, I'm going through a Bible reading plan, reading the entire Bible in a year. Um, and right now I'm in the middle of Deuteronomy and I read this um, passage the other day in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 through 9, and I want to read it to you today. Listen, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. And you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these commandments I am giving you today. Repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you are at home and when you are on the road, when you are going to bed and when you are getting up. Tie them to your hands. Wear them on your forehead as reminders. Write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. This is Moses talking to the people of God, the people of Israel, telling them, you got to remember, this is a, a new generation. They weren't necessarily uh, in Egypt when everything happened. Their, their parents and grandparents who were a part of that, they've, they've died and passed on. This is the book of Deuteronomy. Moses is telling this new generation of Israelites as they're about to move into the promised land, as they're about to encounter some of the greatest things they've ever encountered in their entire lives, that they need to remember who God is. They need to remember what God has done for them. They need to do whatever they can do to remember that God loved them so much that he chose them. And because he chose them and because he cares about them, he moved them out of slavery. It was God and God's power that released them from slavery. Nothing else, nothing that any, any human did release them from slavery. It was all God working through Moses, working through Aaron. And, and releasing them from slavery, moving them now through the wilderness and into the promised land that he gave to them, the oath that he made with their ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he, Moses is telling them, he's instructing them, you need to remember who God is, and you need to remember who you are to God. You're his chosen people. He cares about you. He loves you. You're not the biggest. He says this in this book of Deuteronomy. He says, you're not the biggest nation. You're not the strongest nation, but you are the chosen nation. You are the chosen people of God. 
You need to remember that and you need to remember what God has done for you. And I think that's a great challenge for us today because so often we get comfortable in our daily lives and we get comfortable in our routines that we just kind of go through the motions. We just kind of go through life and everything's good. Everything's fine. And then we forget about what God has done for us and what God uh, has brought us through and what God is moving us into. We need to remember who God is and who we are to God. We need to remember the Bible tells us in the New Testament that we are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, that we as Gentiles have been grafted into the family of God. And therefore, we are heirs with Christ, the promises. But that also means that we are supposed to take the position of Christ. Like Pastor Jeff talked about uh, in Romans 12, we have to be humble. We have to be servants. We have to uh, recognize that God, because God loves us so much and because he sacrificed so much for us, we give our lives to him in surrender and in service of his calling. So I just want to challenge you, take time today, take time this week, open up your word, read about what God has done. Remember what God has done for you personally in your life, what God has done for you, what God has done through you and what God wants to do in your future. And then remember who you are to God. You are his dearly loved possession and you have received grace and mercy that you don't deserve. And because of that, we give back to God everything that we have, which is our lives in complete and total surrender. Friends, let's remember who God is and let's remember who we are. Love you guys. We'll see you on Sunday.